All this week, we've taken an in-depth look at organ donation, the process, the gift, and now the wait. Our Carrie Sharp has been bringing us these stories, terrific stories, Carrie. Informative, eye-opening, I know for you, emotional yeah. and, and personal. Yeah, it is very personal. Late last year, I began the process to donate a kidney to our former co-worker right here at News Channel 5. After months of testing, I found out that I have kidney stones and can't donate. So our friend Alex is still waiting. And that's a reality those hoping for a transplant often face. How does that look? It's hard to see him a little itty bitty model. Right. Framing, lighting, it all comes naturally to Alex Brown. I worked in television for about 17 years, uh, some of that at News Channel 5. Now living in Kansas City, the talented photojournalist, husband, and father. We're blessed to be parents of a five year old who, you know, she's rambunctious and, busy. <laughs> and a very busy girl. Is also the owner of two failing kidneys. They determined to have this condition called drug induced interstitial nephritis. A a doctor's mistake in treating his ulcerative colitis landed him in the hospital. And at 33 years old, news that changed his life. He needed a kidney transplant. The result of the biopsy uh, basically discovered that I had lost at least 60% of my kidney function in both kidneys. A revelation that could turn anyone bitter. I find that the two of us, we don't sit in that place very often of could have been prevented, shouldn't be here. No one will ever be held accountable. But for the Browns, it put them on a mission to find a living donor, which will give Alex the best chance at life. Let's talk about asking for a kidney. That mm. has to be weird. How do you go about even asking for a kidney in the first place? I have a hard time asking for somebody to give me 20 bucks. <laughs> kidney donations are the most common and successful among living donor transplants. A donor can be a family member, friend, or even a stranger. Extensive medical testing is done beforehand to check for compatibility and overall health, all paid for by the recipient's insurance. Patients spend, on average, three to five years waiting for a kidney from a deceased donor. But a living donor is the best option as it allows recipients to live a longer, healthier life. Either way, it is a process that requires patience and living with uncertainty. It really has changed every single thought that we have for our family moving forward of what is best for what we have right now. Two years since his diagnosis, Alex says he's doing okay. Right now, I think I feel fine, but um, my doctors say, look, once you get a kidney, you realize how, how bad, bad you felt. Feeling. <laughs> but there is no doubt this journey can be hard on the heart. Alex lives a life worth saving, um, and us even the uncertainty is really hard. If you want to know more about Alex or organ donation in general, find this story at newschannel5.com. I can tell you the first step to being a living donor is really easy. It just is a phone call and a medical questionnaire. And if you want to register to be an organ donor or tissue donor at the end of life, we're going to have that link online as well. Vicki and Roy, I hope that this series, this in-depth look at organ donation has answered some questions for people and really just started the topic of conversation sure. in your family because that's something very important. Have that conversation now about your wishes. Don't, excuse me, don't leave it to your family to decide yeah. at a time that's filled with stress and grief. Exactly. Yeah, tomorrow's not promised no. to no, anyone. It's not. And to have those decisions made and potentially help others. Right? Let your family know. Yeah. Yeah. Good stories. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie.